Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are going to go back up to the attic space where I have left the enchanting setup. Because I have 36 levels from fishing in yesterday's episode, and boy oh boy, do we need to do something about that. I'm going to throw this iron pickaxe in here to test whether or not we're going to get an enchantment above efficiency 4 or something to supplement efficiency 4 and get ourselves maybe some fortune no we just got on breaking 3 on that one okay well potentially that's worth having for now and we can maybe take a look at some of the other equipment that i've got here an iron axe is going to give us efficiency 4 the sword is saying sharpness 4 which is pretty much worth taking i would say and we can always check our armor as well because there are a few enchantments like aqua affinity could be really useful on a helmet that'll help us break blocks faster underwater the other ones are showing unbreaking so you know what with the two diamonds i have in storage down here i think i'm going to make myself a diamond sword and apply that sharpness enchantment to that instead we've got the diamonds for it we might as well right so that's going to be our last two diamonds spent but no worries my friends because today we're actually going to look at ways that we can combine enchantments so we'll actually get to use this fortune book and we can go digging for some more diamonds but interestingly the diamond sword is now showing unbreaking three in here which is proof enough that different materials can have different different enchantability levels. Quite often I will use the iron equipment, like old iron equipment that I've got lying around, to test the enchantment table for different enchantments. For example, if Fortune 3 comes up on an iron pickaxe, you can be relatively confident that it's going to show up for a diamond one as well. In this case, I am crossing my fingers that this sword is going to come away with sharpness, it got sharpness 3 and not sharpness 4. But hey, at least we got a sharpness enchantment. Sharpness will increase the attack damage of the weapon. A diamond sword normally deals 7 attack damage per hit. As you can see from the tooltips here, it's dealing 9 attack damage with sharpness 3. And we even have a sharpness 3 book here that we can apply to that to upgrade the sword to sharpness 4. But we now have two iron pickaxes that I'm not crazy about the enchantments on, especially considering we already have an efficiency and unbreaking diamond pickaxe with a lot more durability. So we are going to remove the enchantments from these two pickaxes. To do that, we will need a grindstone. And to craft a grindstone, all we will need is two planks, a stone slab, and two sticks in that formation. We got ourselves a grindstone. We're going to put that up here next to our enchantment setup because the purpose of the grindstone is to repair and disenchant items. Now, the repairs happen much the same as they do in the 2x2 crafting interface, so we won't really be using it for that all that often. What we will be using it for is taking the efficiency enchantment off this iron pickaxe, which means two things. First of all, we get a little bit of XP back, so if you're looking for something to take you over the line to 30 levels so you can do a maximum level enchant, disenchanting gear that you don't want the enchantments on is a useful option. So this will now allow us to attempt another enchantment on this iron pickaxe, and we got a slightly better one this time around. We're swapping efficiency 4 for efficiency 4 and unbreaking 3. Still not the ideal outcome. I still would have wanted fortune. But if we want to, we can always save these, grind the enchantments off them, and try again. Right now, though, I'm back down below 30 levels, which means I won't be able to do any maximum level enchantments. And I wanted to make sure I was down below 30 levels before we did this next part. So we're going to turn 27 of our iron ingots into three iron blocks. We're going to turn those and four iron ingots into an anvil. And we're going to add this to our enchanting setup up here as well. I think I'll put it on this side. And where the grindstone is used to repair tools and disenchant them, an anvil can be used to repair them, rename them, and keep the enchantments if they are complete. Combined. Repairing tools can be done in a couple of different ways. First of all, we'll put our iron sword in there with an iron ingot, and you'll notice that this costs one level to do, that's the enchantment cost, but our damaged iron sword has 145 durability, adding one iron ingot to it gets you 207 durability left, so that's a pretty significant repair. Adding a second iron ingot in there will increase the level cost to two, but will fully repair the sword. Of course, that's not the best decision we could make because two iron ingots and a stick will make us a new iron sword anyway. But on the other hand, if I only have one diamond but I desperately need to repair this pickaxe, throwing a diamond in here with the diamond pickaxe will repair enough durability that it could keep going for a while. The other important thing is that enchantments on damaged gear will be kept if you repair them in an anvil. I'm going to put these two bows in here, for example, the power one bow that we've been using. And if we put in an unenchanted bow with enough durability to fully repair the the bow we've been using, it keeps that power one enchantment. But having enchantments on your equipment increases the cost to repair them in an anvil. So if you are combining a couple of higher level enchantments, for example, if I were to combine 
these two iron pickaxes, that's going to cost me 11 levels. And what it does is combine the two efficiency 4 enchantments and increase them to efficiency 5. It only does that if you're trying to combine two items with similar enchantments though. Take for example this bow here. We fished this up the other day. It's got power 3, unbreaking 3 and mending. If I combine that with a power 4 bow, it upgrades the enchantment to power 4, but it doesn't take it any higher than that level. In the meantime, if I combine this power 4 bow with another power 4 bow, we get a bow with power 5, and the combined durability of both, plus a little extra. The other thing to note here is that the order you put the items in the anvil will make a difference, and generally speaking, it's a good idea to add the lower level enchantments or the items with fewer enchantments in the second slot of the repair interface. With the power 3, unbreaking 3, mending bow here, and this power 4 bow here, it's only going to cost me 6 levels. If I reverse the positions of those, it's going to cost me 16 levels because I'm adding three enchantments to this item instead of adding one enchantment to that item. You'll also notice that some enchantments either cannot be combined or are just redundant. So for example, these two iron pickaxes both have Unbreaking 3. That's the maximum level of Unbreaking you can have, so it doesn't get upgraded to Unbreaking 4. It's also not possible to combine two different types of tools. You couldn't take the Unbreaking enchantment from this sword and put it on a pickaxe that didn't have Unbreaking. And likewise, it is not possible to combine tools of two different materials. We can't take the enchantments from this Iron pickaxe and imbue them on the Diamond one. But the thing we're actually going to spend our levels on is right here. We have some Enchanted Books, and Enchanted Books can be used to apply the enchantments on them to any tool, as long as that enchantment is compatible. So in this case, we can add Fortune 2 to our diamond pickaxe for the cost of four levels. But this book has Sharpness 3 and Fortune 2 on it. Sharpness 3 is an enchantment that can only be applied to weapons, and specifically melee weapons. So a sword or an axe would be able to accept that sharpness enchantment, but we cannot make our pickaxe any sharper. So in this case, we gain Fortune 2 on the pickaxe, but we lose the opportunity to enchant something with Sharpness 3, because when we do that, the book is consumed along with the four levels that it said it was going to cost. We're now down at 23 levels, but we have a Fortune 2 pickaxe, which has the potential to get us even more resources from precious blocks like iron and diamonds. Luckily, we have a second Sharpness 3 book in here, so we can combine that with the Diamond Sword, and we end up with a Sharpness 4 Unbreaking 3 Diamond Sword for the additional cost of 4 levels. So now we're back down to 19 levels, and I think we might want to combine a couple of other things as well. Since I fished up enough of these fishing rods, we have Lure 2 and Unbreaking 3 on this one, we have Mending and Luck of the Sea 3 on that one. If we were to combine these two, and we can swap these around just to see if there's a slightly more favourable enchantment cost. There we go. That's 16 levels because we are combining four enchantments onto the same fishing rod, but that is going to be a rod worth having. We are only missing another lure 2 enchantment to take us over the edge into lure 3, and that will be the best fishing rod we could possibly have. We could even use this bow that we fished up the other day and combine that with a power 4 bow to make sure that at least has a decent power level. But unfortunately, we are low enough in levels that we can't enchant this right now. We can't combine the two tools. We simply don't have the experience. So those two bows can go back in the chest right now, but we can probably take one of these power 4 bows, swap that for our power 1 bow, and maybe disenchant the power 1 to get a little experience back from the grindstone. One additional note about the grindstone though, it cannot remove curses. So Curse of Vanishing being on here, it will stay on here even if we try to disenchant it in the grindstone. So I'm going to use it to cook some fish, <laughs> because bows can still be used as furnace fuel since they are made of wood. This fishing rod might suffer the same fate since it also has Curse of Vanishing, but before that, we could potentially grindstone off that Luck of the Sea 2 enchantment and get a few levels back from that. Then it's going in the smoker just like the bow did. And I did just have to double check that I didn't put the rod that I'd combined in there, but thankfully I did not, and we have a really useful fishing rod. So now freshly equipped with our Fortune 2 pickaxe, I'm going to head back out into the world and we're going to find any veins of coal that we've missed in the area, and then we're going to return to that deep slate cave to see if we can mine those diamond ores. Having broken a couple of pieces there, we still only have two coal, and that is because fortune is not a guaranteed thing. It increases the likelihood of ore blocks 
box dropping multiple items, but it does not guarantee it. But there we go, having broken our fifth block of coal, we've gathered four coals so far. This one here has just dropped multiple, so now we're up to six. And after breaking a few more, we're up to 17 coal, so that is enough for a few more torches. We're close to a full stack. Let's go caving. So returning to the deep slate levels of the world, I'm pretty sure around here, yep, there we go. This is one block of diamond ore that we resisted mining until we had fortune on our side. So let's see if we can mine this, and that's definitely dropped multiple diamonds. We got three out of that one. That is brilliant. When it comes to ores like diamonds, each level of fortune increases your chance of getting one additional diamond from a block. So with fortune three, it's possible to get four diamonds from a single diamond ore. It is, however, still possible to only get a single diamond, so bear that in mind. Our Sharpness 4 Diamond Sword is now comfortably dealing with these creepers, so I feel a lot safer down here. And our second Diamond Ore block will potentially give us multiple drops as well. Nope, that looks like it just gave us one diamond. Still, the average between those two is we got two diamonds per ore block, which is already doubling what we would have got before. It will also increase the drops you get from other ores, so let's say we mine some gold. We mine four blocks of that, and we have eight pieces of raw gold. And raw gold normally only drops one per ore block, so once again, we have basically doubled what we expected to get. And over here, I found another exposed block of diamond ore on the surface. I'm going to quickly check around here in case there are any more blocks hiding below this. Yes, there are. There was a diagonal vein. Perfect. All right. Well, let's see what we get from these two. We get one from that one, but we get multiple from that one. Seven diamonds total from four blocks mined. We are still doing pretty well. Fortune does not increase the amount of experience orbs that will drop from these blocks, but we're definitely going to mine those while we're here since we are now back down to lower levels. Once we get back to level 30, I'm going to recommend going back and enchanting something else right away. And as a general rule of thumb, it's always a good idea to do all of your enchanting before you do do any repairs, because the repairs will take you down below 30 levels, and then you won't be able to perform a maximum level enchant until you get your 30 levels back. And as I explore this cave, I'm now on the lookout for areas we can drop down into even lower coordinates of the world and potentially find some more diamonds. It looks like right here, we also have the beginnings of an abandoned mine shaft, which is something we will have to come back and explore in a future episode, so I'm going to take the coordinates of that. For now, though, I'm going to turn away from that. I'm going to use my water bucket trick to drop down here, and it looks like this leads into a cave that we can explore in the hope of finding some of that lower down diamond ore. Now that we have a bucket of water on us frequently, we can also turn all of this lava into obsidian, making it safer to walk on. And since this is pretty low down in the world already, we're at Y-54, I can start mining into the walls around here to see if they contain any precious resources just below the surface. Now that we're a little way away from the lava lakes, we can dig down into the lower coordinates of the world and we'll dig at Y-58 for a while, until very shortly into this tunnel, we encounter another patch of diamonds. We're only maybe, what, 12, 15 blocks down this tunnel and it looks like we have encountered a vein of at least four diamonds. But we have seven diamonds on us right now. Let's see if Fortune can acquire us any more. 13. So once again, we mined four blocks, we got six diamonds back, and now we are sitting on a decent pile of diamonds. It's not quite enough to get fully kitted out with diamond equipment, but it is enough to get some more tools and potentially some armor as well. And back on the surface, it's raining, so I'm going to take this opportunity to fish a little bit over here at our fishing shack. We'll throw a few of the mob drops into this barrel that I put here so we can have a little inventory space for our fishing loot. The fish are going to bite pretty quickly, so watch the durability on my fishing rod when that happens. Happens. There we go, we got a little extra durability back. Once the fishing rod is fully repaired, it's only going to lose one durability at a time, and with Unbreaking 3, it's often unlikely to lose any durability at all when we use it to reel in a fish. So any experience that's left over is still going to be transferred to our experience bar and increase the number of levels that we've gathered. Meaning that even though mending is going to siphon off a little bit of experience now and then, this is still a really great way of gathering experience for our next enchanting session. So I'm going to do that for a while now. Stick around for the rest of the video and we'll see what we can do with the rest of those diamonds. Hey folks, welcome back. So as you can see, I've done a bit more fishing and I even went out and got a few more resources as well. So I've got some iron smelting in the furnace upstairs, but what we're really here for is these diamonds right here. And we're going to take some time to consider what the best options are for our diamond tools. Now I do want a diamond axe because I do a lot of tree chopping. I kind of make a habit of gathering wood as often as possible in my Minecraft worlds. That way, if I need wood for a building project later, then I don't have to spend a bunch of time then and there farming the wood. I've always got it in stock. 
block. Naturally, to round out our set of tools, we're going to want a diamond shovel. So I think that's going to be next on the agenda, right? Our iron shovel is almost on its last legs. We kind of need to upgrade. Next up, I'm going to make at least one more diamond pickaxe because there is a chance that we could get the silk touch enchantment and silk touch is an enchantment that we can't have on our fortune pickaxe because what silk touch does is instead of breaking down the ore block into diamonds or whatever it actually harvests the ore block and you get to collect that block itself the ore block drops as an ore block and you get to take that home and maybe fortune it there or use it for building or whatever silk touch effectively allows you to obtain blocks that you couldn't obtain normally and that doesn't include things like skeletons spawners before you ask and once we have silk touch i'll be able to explain more about that so we're going to drop this into the enchantment table and already we have unbreaking three coming up we're going to get that on the shovel and the axe as well since a lot of the tools tend to share an enchantment pool but that means if we end up getting silk touch on this axe it's likely that we would have got it on the pickaxe as well either way i think we're going to start with the axe because really all i want for this is unbreaking and efficiency and we just got unbreaking. That's kind of unfortunate, but we'll see what else we get before we try and re-roll that enchantment. Let's see what we've got here. Now Fortune 3 is coming up on this pickaxe, and that presents an interesting opportunity. Because this pickaxe has been very good to us, but what if we get a Fortune 3 one with Efficiency 4? That's not too bad. And of course, we could combine these two to make an Efficiency 5 and Fortune 3 pickaxe with Unbreaking 3 on it, so we would get the best of both worlds here. Now we're back down to 28 levels, let's take a look at what the shovel would have. The shovel would have Efficiency 4, and I didn't want to have Fortune on the shovel because the only thing that that would do is make gravel drop flint 100% of the time. So now I'm going to briefly take a look at how much it's going to cost to combine these two pickaxes, and that is going to be 20 levels at least. But that will get us a Fortune 3 pickaxe that is near perfect. All we would need is a book that we can use to apply the mending enchantment, and that would be a pickaxe that we can keep for all time. That still means we are going to be short the opportunity to get a Silk Touch pickaxe, so I am going to test this in the table one more time. Efficiency 4 is coming up and that's it. But that leaves us with only three diamonds left, which is not quite enough diamonds to make any of the diamond armor. So you know what? We're going to stash those back in the chest in the basement and hopefully we'll be able to gather some more diamonds. Since we won't really be needing the enchantments on these two iron pickaxes anymore, I'm going to take those off purely so I can get some experience back. We can also unload the blast furnace to get some more XP from the iron we've been smelting. And I have some copper in here that can go as well. So that'll get us back over the line to 30 levels. And we'll cross our fingers that this enchantment is going to give us silk touch. No, it just gave us efficiency 4. Okay. Well, at this point, that's not good enough. So that's coming off as well. And at this point, you can kind of see what we're doing here. We're returning to 30 levels each time, put the tool back in the enchantment table, see what you get. If you don't like it, use the grindstone to remove the enchantment and go again. Another option you can take is to put in a tool that you don't really care about, that you're not really that interested in enchanting, but you can reset the table and have it generate a new set of enchantments just by enchanting this with a low level enchantment that's only going to cost you one level. You can use the grindstone to remove that enchantment so you get a bit of the experience back. And then I'm going to put the pickaxe back in the enchantment table and now it's showing up as efficiency 4. So once again, we're going to re-roll that, get efficiency 2 on this shovel, and see what the diamond pickaxe says next time. That says I'm breaking 3. And we're going to repeat this process a few times until we are guaranteed a silk touch enchantment next time we enchant our diamond pickaxe. But before we do that, I am going to combine these two fortune pickaxes. That's going to cost us 20 levels, and if we decide to rename this, it's going to be 21 levels. But I think a pickaxe this good deserves a name. I guess we're going to call this one Diamonds Are Forever. And that's going to cost us 21 levels, but it's going to be worth every penny. Now, of course, we will need to get back to the point where we have enough levels to even enchant the first level and re-roll what's available to us in the enchantment table. But I'm very happy with this pickaxe, and we could use that to go out looking for more diamonds today. I have a slightly different plan, though, and it's a plan that's going to take me back to the now infamous place where I first died in this world, right here in this skeleton spawner. Well, I actually died outside, but the skeleton spawner is what we are here for, because if we darken this, it will spawn a couple of skeletons, some of whom will immediately start fighting each other, but as we dispatch these skeletons, we'll be getting a bit of XP from it. And the cool thing about these spawners is that they will keep doing this. Whenever we remove the torch and it is dark enough in here, this spawner will frequently produce more skeletons. And they actually won't drop any experience unless a player kills them, so we better make sure we take care of them ourselves, but this is a really great way of farming experience. Not to mention we're getting bones, I got a gold chest plate from that skeleton that spawned, and there's a few other items in here that we need to clean up, but we 
are going to spend tomorrow's episode turning this spawner into a farm for experience and for bones and for arrows and bows and all of the other stuff that skeletons are likely to drop. And with the power of this skeleton spawner, we are going to have enough experience to enchant whatever we want, whenever we want. So that's going to be tomorrow's episode. But for now, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.